This time on Road and Race, my research into buying the right M3. In the previous video, I went through my reasons to buy an M3. In this episode, I'll take you through my research to get a good one. I've decided to buy the previous generation M3 to the car on sale now, as I feel it offers the best value, so I'll be talking about the E92 platform. I'll explain what came as standard on the car and what was an option. I'll also share my findings on common faults and what to look for when buying one. Lastly, I'll share my particular specification of M3 I was looking for and how I found the right one for sale. I'm researching a car that was released over 10 years ago, so I wasn't able to find all the information I would have liked, so some points may be incorrect, but here's my best attempt. The car was available in a choice of eight exterior colours. The six with metallic paint were graphite, silverstone, interlagos blue, space grey, Jerez black and Melbourne red. The final two was a jet black and alpine white. Inside you had a choice of leather in silver, fox red, bamboo beige or black. There was also an anthracite and black cloth and leather option available too, although must be pretty rare as I didn't see any cars with this choice available. Standard kit on the car was pretty generous. Xenon headlights, auto dimming rear view mirror, seats with lumbar and width controls, as well as two position memories, auto rain sensing wipers, air conditioning, cruise control, rear parking sensors, iDrive computer and rear folding seats. Optionally you could specify heated seats, power folding mirrors, garage door opener, keyless entry or comfort access as BMW call it, 19 inch alloy wheels, double clutch flappy paddle automatic transmission, warm start, TV, front parking sensors, refrigerated cup holder, and the electronic damping control suspension. Not sure if sat nav with real time traffic or the voice control feature was standard, might depend on the year and region of the car as far as I can tell. Apart from the normal things you would expect to need replacing or servicing on a 10 year old car, there are a couple of items that stood out. The first are the throttle actuators. They basically allow air into the engine when you step on the accelerator pedal. They use plastic gears inside them and they wear out. How long they last appears to vary. Can be 60,000 miles, could only be 10,000 miles. They cost 700 pounds each and there's two of them. So when they fail, you're looking at a whopping 1400 pounds and the cost of garage labor to get them fixed. Luckily, third party upgraded gears made of a mix of high temperature nylon with carbon fiber are available. They cost £165 if you feel like swapping them out yourself, or £470 if you have the units rebuilt for you. Now time for the big one, rod bearings. If these fail, they'll destroy your engine. Here you can see heavy scoring on one of them, possibly down to too little engine oil being able to get in to lubricate the part. I spent many hours on this one, trawling the many threads on the forums. Bearings had failed on cars with only 10,000 miles, Yet, you've got cars of over 200,000 miles still going strong on the original bearings. The whole situation reminded me of the turmoil I had before buying the 986 Porsche Boxster. Reports of IMS bearing failures destroying engines. Most of you watching already know I bought a well-maintained 986, serviced her regularly and in the two years had no problems with bearings. Is this a case of bad news travels fast or is it a genuine problem? Well, I've failed to find any hard and fast numbers on the scale of the issue. I'd be interested to know if there are any. So far, I believe it's only happened to a small number of engines. There is good news though. You can potentially get an early warning of a failure by having an oil analysis done and checking for high levels of lead or copper. If you then decide to replace the bearings and rods, parts will be roughly £600. Fitting them is a bit involved though, as the whole front subframe needs to come off, so you'll be looking at one to two days of labour. So what am I looking for? Well it has to be a black exterior with either a black or silver interior, done no more than 60 to 70,000 miles and has to have the EDC adjustable suspension option as I feel that's essential for the track. 
Obviously, it has to have a full service history and as much additional paperwork such as receipts and invoices as possible. Also, it has to be less than £20,000. A nice to have would be the updated CSL 19 inch wheels. I think the standard alloys look fine, but as these came out in 2011 in the competition pack for the car, they make it look younger than it is. Also, I think they're the best looking wheels BMW have ever sold. Anyone who's seen my buyer's guide videos will know I champion buying a car, especially a performance car, from a fellow enthusiast. Then you have more chance of it being well taken care of. So for about four weeks, I was checking in in the four sales sections of UK M3 and general BMW forums. Nothing fitting my requirements came up, so I started looking on Auto Trader as well. There were a couple of cars that fitted the bill, but they were on sale by dealers. I gave them both a ring. The first car was very competitively priced, being only £19,000, having done only 45,000 miles. The problem was that I had no service history. None. I was told it was a dealer to dealer sale and the promised paperwork never arrived in the post. Suddenly the car looked overpriced and not surprisingly I told the dealer it was too much of a risk at that price. It didn't want to come down on price though, so I politely said goodbye. The second had higher mileage of 62,000 miles but was a thousand pounds cheaper at 18,000. Speaking with the dealer, this car had the BMW service booklet but that was all. He could only tell me when engine oil and spark plugs had been changed. No other paperwork for items such as coolant, transmission fluid, coil packs, etc. Not only this, but when I asked if I could test drive it, he said the person with the keys was away on holiday, and if I could wait a week. Also, both cars had tyres on them by Acceleror. I'd never heard of that brand, and looking them up on the internet, they appear to be the budget option for this car. It was a comment left on one of my videos by uh, a user called Von Dyke, which has always stuck with me. If a car is equipped with cheap tyres in relation to its value, just walk away. The previous owner was not willing to spend any money on the car, which I think is so true. So after that frustration, I checked a general car site for enthusiasts here in the UK called Piston Heads. I immediately kicked myself not thinking of it earlier as I found a suitable car almost immediately. It was the right colour, had the EDC suspension, and as a bonus had the CSL wheels. There were two small problems though. It had done 75,000 miles, and it was over 200 miles away. I spoke with the owner John, who was very well spoken and clearly loved and knew a lot about the car. He had bought it a year ago with only 55,000 miles on it, and was selling it due to the large amount of motorway miles he had done on it, and wanted something a bit more economical. I then felt a bit more reassured about the mileage. It was higher than I wanted, but motorway miles are easier on the car than town driving. Reassuringly, the car had good quality tyres on it, the Michelin Pilot Sport 2s. The clincher though, was not only a full service history, but over three years of paperwork detailing all the additional repairs and servicing. So I arranged a time to visit him and come see the car. So join me next time when I travel the 200 miles to Leeds and take this M3 for a test drive. If you found this video useful, please subscribe and hit the like button as it really helps us make more shows. Please feel free to get in touch by leaving a comment on this video and I reply to everyone. Links to follow us on social media are in the description box. Thanks for watching.